Together, Khalif and I walked around to the main doors of the hospital. Him with his gained weight, me with my no-nonsense persona I cooked up just for Aida. I didn't want to reuse it in case she'd see me from the waiting room, but I couldn't hide from her and work with her at the same time. That was the thing about cooperation. Some level of risk was unavoidable. This will be fine, I told myself, but I didn't believe me. The best of bad options was still a bad option. Khalif took my hand in his. It wasn't until then that I realized my fingers were shaking. It'll be okay, he said. I didn't believe him either. And even now that I was aware of it, even with all of my practice at muscle control, I couldn't get the trembling to stop. Logically, I knew I should feel at least a little bit better, knowing mom was stable enough to be transferred out of emergency, but I felt instead like I tipped face first over a cliff. What if I'd stayed to watch that whole movie with Khalif? What if I'd run a job before going home? Would mom have come to on the kitchen floor, safer and better off than she was now? Or would I have found her body cold and faceless? My mouth watered. I was going to puke. Khalif jerked on my arm, pulling me to a stop. There, through the glass doors of the main entrance, sitting at the cafe in the hospital lobby, was Aida, still wearing the redhead persona. She sat at a two-person table, but had already dragged over a third chair. She didn't appear to be waiting for us, focusing instead on her phone, as if she didn't have to be nervous, as if she was in complete and total control. Through the glass, I scanned the exits. There were the doors we were looking through. There was an elevator and a stairwell near it and four hallways stretching out of the lobby like spokes on a wheel. Khalif was right. The hospital had security. Aida wasn't dressed as law enforcement, and even if she had a hidden badge, I would have plenty of opportunity to undermine her persona. 